as SpaceX and NASA appear to be getting closer towards launching a Mars mission, and yeah, sure, it might be a couple of years away, but still, they are definitely getting closer. Scientists have worked out exactly how many people or how many astronauts are actually needed for this mission. The number might surprise you. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. And I do find this fascinating. It is, in fact, what I find even probably just as fascinating is the fact that NASA are now saying they believe there is, in fact, life on Mars. I just read that within the last 24 hours. They have discovered new materials showing that they believe that, yes, there is organic life on Mars. Now, why do we need to go to Mars? Why is this relevant? Do we even need to, really? Well, because one day we could destroy the planet with a nuclear war. At least what Elon Musk believes is likely to happen. Will that happen? Don't know. But it is very possible that the Earth will heat up to the point where we can't live for any more within, I don't know, probably a couple of million years. I think it's a long way away, but it could happen sooner than that. Who knows? This is like a backup plan for the planet. If human beings destroy it too much or if the sun simply continues to get hotter at a faster rate than what we thought it would, which is very possible, and well, we can't live here anymore. We've got to take off and live somewhere else. Could we live on Mars, theoretically? Yes. I mean, there's not really any oxygen there. However, we could create our own kind of greenhouses. And we've recently discovered that if you put solar on greenhouses, it makes them about 60% more energy efficient. And then of course, grow plants in there, plants grow oxygen. There's all kinds of different methods and ways that humans could live potentially on Mars. Amazingly, only about 24 astronauts are enough to build and maintain a Mars colony. According to a new study, which suggests this low number compared to previous estimates of about 100 people can sustain a habitat on the red planet. Now, what the study proposes, I believe, is that there would be 22 women or maybe 23 women and one, you know, one man who's very, very virile who then could populate Mars with many children. I actually made that part up. It's not true at all. In theory, you know, more, more than say a couple of men is not really what you would think would be of a lot of use in order to have a colony and build that colony. Anyway, researchers, including those from George Mason University in the United States, reviewed previous studies, which calculated that anywhere from 100 to 500 astronauts would be needed for a self-sustaining Mars colony based on a number of factors. Now, those studies, it turns out, were a bit ridiculous. I mean, 500 people, really? You need that many? I don't think so. Anyway, their new yet-to-be-peer-reviewed analysis posted a preprint in RZIV, then additionally took into account human social and psychological behavior, as well as continuity of interactions between people to make a new estimate and one which gives us some hope that maybe this will happen within our lifetimes that would be fascinating the findings suggest that 22 people may be enough to build and sustain a space colony on mars less than two dozen decades of exploration of the red planet by space agencies across the world have found conclusively that building any human settlement on mars is going to be a very complex engineering problem that said we don't know if that's really true. Why do I say that? Well, because artificial general intelligence is starting to find some incredible solutions. Did I just say artificial general intelligence? No, I didn't mean that. We don't have AGI yet, do we? We just have AI or artificial intelligence. Once we hit AGI, well, that's a game changer. But until then, even now, artificial, limited artificial intelligence is still finding incredible ways, especially using quantum computing, to find solutions to problems we previously thought impossible. In fact, the laws of physics have recently been broken about 20 times this year, based mostly on the ability of these supercomputers to generate answers that we never before thought were even possible. The red planet's inhospitable nature, though, requires any habitat built there to be largely self-sustaining, says scientists. Apart from mining a few basic materials, think of like Minecraft, you've seen that? Yeah, it sort of works like that. No, not really. And water, future Mars settlers will be dependent on Earth resupply as well as in-situ replenishment 
on necessities using advanced technology such as splitting Martian water into oxygen for breathing and for hydrogen for fuel. The future colonists will have to endure psychological and human behavior challenges, researchers say. In the new study, data scientists sought to better understand the behavioral and psychological interactions of future Martian colonists. We seek to identify areas of consideration for planning a colony. As well, propose a minimum initial population size required to create a stable colony, they wrote in the study. For the analysts, scientists analyzed previous data on high-performing teams working in isolated and high-stress environments such as submarines, Arctic exploration, and the International Space Station to model the kinds of interactions taking place between agents with four different psychological profiles. They used a type of computer simulation called agent-based modeling or ABM, which is used to analyze complex systems and predict the emergence of larger patterns and phenomena with simple rules and behaviors. Using the model, researchers simulated survival of a human habitat on Mars under different conditions, including when global events such as accidents or delays in Earth resupply affect the colony. Obviously, resupply would be a major issue. You can imagine if an Earth resupply was on the way, it takes many months to get to Mars, so that could be a challenge. Scientists created models for Martian settlers with varying individual levels of factors such as metabolism, resilience, skills, and their levels and stress, as well as taking into account one of four psychological traits, neurotic, reactive, social, or agreeable. Apparently they've ruled out taking Amber Heard on this trip. Anyway, the simulation also took into account the environmental variables that the settlers would encounter, the study said. As the modeled Mars colonists sleep, move, interact with each other and produce or consume resources. They could also lose health and die and get removed from the simulation without enough resources. Five runs of the model for a period lasting 28 years with the initial population sizes in this simulation ranging from 10 to 170, found that an initial population of 22 was the minimum number required to maintain a viable colony size over the long run. Researchers also found that the agreeable personality type associated with overall greater empathy was the one more likely to survive while those with the neurotic psychology died at a much higher rate. Interesting. Probably a good thing to consider for yourself. Maybe those parameters would apply in normal life. People with a neurotic psychology, it sounds like we're not going to live as long as those who are agreeable. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on this? 22 people. That could be a good number. I mean, 500, that could be a big challenge to get 500 people to Mars. Getting 22 there, well, like I said, that may happen within the next 10 years. I hope it does. That would be very, very exciting. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.